So I think like last time, we'll give folks a little bit of time to see if we're going to get any. Anybody from the public? If not, probably by 6.15, we'll launch into our monthly meeting. Sounds like a plan to me. You still got three minutes. I'm trying to be hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always hopeful that somebody's going to. I know. I, you know I think I, it's a shame. I have an this... interest. I'm going to show up. I can make it today. So much money involved, and yet. Were there a lot of people at the, uh, the town hall study no. presentation? Other. Yeah. It was probably, I mean, no. I would say there might have been, other than the usual people that show up mm -hmm. to the meetings, there might have been four or five others. That was about it. Yeah, I mean, we Maybe had, a half a dozen. We had the three or four that show up to the select board meetings usually. Okay. And, I mean, there were, it looked like there were a lot of people here, but they were really folks that sit on the different committees right. or organizations yeah. okay that that's more what it was they wanted to make sure that the historical society, the historical uh, society they had two or two people from there you had the zoning administrator and his wife you had um the listers and their families um so it was oh, okay all, so we really had people who we didn't get anybody any who, large general people. general public, general yeah. public no. there were you know like i said the the couple of people that have been showing up to the select board mm -hmm. meetings on a regular basis from the general public have been here, but that was, that was it. Like if you didn't know where people were from, you would think there were, oh, it was, right, you'd think we had a pretty good representation. Yeah. So when I, first, I was running a bit late, I got caught up in the Montpelier traffic, construction traffic. And I pulled into the yard, and I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of people here, because there were a bunch of cars out there, but. It's funny, whenever I, whenever I talk to somebody, too, I try to make sure that I invite them, you know, oh, yeah, you know, here's, here's when we're meeting or whatever. Somebody has a question or whatever, it's like, oh, you should come. <laughs> so, I have an idea. Should you do a presentation anyway? So it gets on Orca, and Probably. Then anybody oh, yeah. could do zoom in yeah. um, to that's Orca at any point it. in time. Oh, that's, a good, that's a good point. Yep. And we could put the link on the front porch for them. Yep, put it's it already there. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, but and I think the link to your yeah. to your presentation is up on the website. It as is. Well. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. So, but. I don't know. I do know there is some people who watch ORCA oh, afterwards for the select board um, yeah. because I mean, they'll comment on it. Right. Oh, okay. It's so, um, 601. We might as well just start the recording yeah. and just go, I guess. Yeah, let's get, we'll get started. We want to do that. And sure. Then, Why don't we do that? I mean, it might be, it doesn't hurt anyways. Right. No, I, I, I think that's the way to go, right? Everything okay. gets Makes recorded sense. and... We'll put it in the history. Yeah. yeah. And then if somebody, in progress. if somebody logs in, we can always answer the questions sure. that we have or, or sure. backtrack. All right. So we're calling this meeting to order. This is our first capital budget review. Uh, just some background. In the summer of 2021, there was a work group with folks from the budget committee, select board, and uh, a state consultant that sort of put together what's called our capital improvement plan, which is, which is basically a capital asset inventory, which lists basically every big ticket item in the town that will need to be replaced at some point in time. Um, also, a process document, how to add things to the inventory, and also a 
a submission form that folks would use to actually request a new capital item to be added to the inventory. So that happened the summer of 2021, um, and that got us started because we got a lot of feedback from taxpayers that they didn't want to get caught off guard when there were big capital items that were being added to the budget that would have an impact on the tax rate. So the attempt here of the capital improvement plan is to, as much as possible, be proactive with capital expenditures and to smooth out as much as possible the future tax rate increases as a result of those. So the town owns a bunch of things. You know, we have buildings, we have equipment, we have land. Uh, and again, replacing any of these things is a substantial cost. So again, the, the capital improvement plan is, is, its intent is to spread the cost out as much as possible over time to avoid any major, I'll call it peaks in the tax rate. So the definition of the improvement plan, it, it, again, it focuses on large, I'll call them sporadic maintenance items. Paving's one of them. We, we put money in a paving fund every year because we know, even though I guess we're the second least paved town in the in the uh, in the state, we still have paving costs, and they're rising. Um, you know, again, improvements to town facilities. Uh, we have the fire and the public works folks who have a lot of vehicles and equipment that have to be replaced on a regular basis. We could buy land. Um, a capital improvement could be a study that's that's being done if it if it costs enough money. So. The threshold that we're using to put something on the capital asset inventory is, is something that costs $5,000 or more. That was just the, uh, I think the work group's consensus in terms of what that threshold would be. So to differentiate between the budget and the, the capital improvement plan, think of the budget as operational annual costs. Capital improvement plan, the big piece of that is the asset, asset inventory. It's advisory in nature and it's forward looking. So if we think about it, we would we would look at the capital asset inventory, take things from that, and over time put them in the annual budget. And the uh, asset inventory, by the way, is is um, looking out at least 10 years. I think ours is looking out at least 15. 15. But again, there are, there are many towns, I'm sure, who don't have a capital improvement plan. But this is something that towns are looking at because of the impacts on their tax base of making these kinds of um, capital investments, particularly if you get hit with them in back-to-back -back years or in a concentrated uh, short time frame, it's going to impact the tax rate. So the process is the budget committee asks, um, we extract from the asset inventory what looks like it, it's going to end, what's going to have a useful life that's ending in the next budget year. So we take those, we gather them up, we try to figure out whether the costs are accurate or not. We may talk to departments and ask, are you going to replace that asset next year? Because again, the asset inventory, in addition to having estimated cost, useful life, uh, and other things, you know, it's an estimated useful life. A piece of equipment might last longer, it might not last as long. So again, those are the, the questions we ask. And once we confirm that, we finalize what we think are those items from the capital asset inventory that would be in, in the next year's budget. And for our purposes, next year is fiscal year 24-25, which is July 1st of 2024 through June 30th of 2025. Because remember, we're, we're on a mid-year fiscal budget. So then we hold a, a public meeting to inform voters, and that's what we're doing now. This is our first public meeting of this type. And then we, we take the results of this and we submit it to the select board as part of the budgeting process, which will start in early November. So that's the process. Uh, new items for the next fiscal year. Uh, we have a, we have three of them. The town hall um, in the asset inventory is thirty thousand dollars for elevator 
um, maintenance or fixes if needed. I think most folks know the study is, has been completed about whether we're going to uh, renovate this town hall or we're going to build a new one at a different site. So again, we're trying to keep costs down as to what needs to be done to the current town hall as much as possible because everybody knows the cost of a new town hall will be significant and will be bonded, if I'm accurate. Yep. Um, so the other two items are both in public works. We have a dump truck that's uh, useful life ends in 2025. Um, it's about $196,000 to replace it. Um, again, we generally finance these types of things over five years. The estimated cost would be about 48000 a year. Um, but again, we, we don't know the exact cost. This is an estimate. We know with interest rates having risen over the last few years, that cost might be a, a bit higher to finance, as our estimate was based on a 5% interest rate, and we know rates are around 7% now for a lot of loans. Uh, the other thing is the Cabel Cabelco excavator, which uh, anybody who saw it doing ditching this summer to fix the roads and things, um, it squeals quite a bit. <laughs> so it's telling us it's near it's the end of its useful life. And that's a $170,000 item. Again, we financed over five years, and the approximate loan payment would be about 41000 beginning uh, next year. So. If we look at the total funding for fiscal year 2024, 20, 2025 from, from capital, it's, it's $30,000 more than what we have in the current year's budget for capital, and that's for, the, that's for the elevator repairs if we need them. The other items are the town hall building fund for 10,000, the bridge, bridge fund for 6,000, the paving fund for 30,000, the tennis court resurfacing fund for 5,000, that's at Rumney for anybody who's interested in knowing where that is. Uh, the town garage building fund of 5,000, and then the new asset equipment fund that we had approved at last year's town meeting. Uh, again, for heavy equipment, mostly in public works and fire, and that's a $50,000 allocation. So talk about 136,000 this year versus 130,000 last year for proposed funding for capital improvement. So in just a, a couple of other things, since I got through that fairly quickly, for folks who are interested in the, a further horizon, what we're looking at are replacement costs going out. On fire, we have a couple of fire engines that their useful lives are ending in 2030 and 2033, and the estimate for each of those is about $250,000. Then we have a tanker that, that's useful life ends in 2034, and that's another 250,000. So in fire alone, we have about 750,000 of outlay that we're expecting between 2030 and 2034. Highway, the other big department, we've got, we've got a bunch of things. We've got a loader for 85,000 that we think needs to replace, be replaced in 2026. We have another dump truck at 157,000 in 2027. We have a backhoe for 106,000 in 2028. We have a pickup whose useful life ends in 2029 for an estimate of 43,000. And we have a couple of other dump trucks that will come due in 2030 and 2032 for 179,000 and 196,000. So again, a fair amount of money expected to be spent in fire and in highway over the next, you know, three to nine years. So that concludes the presentation. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions unless members of the group have questions. Uh, I'll ask a couple just to clarify. So if anybody's watching this later on, there are some answers. Um, just wanted to point out that uh, some of the numbers that are referenced for values here do include uh, an estimate of 15% of trade-in value on the existing piece of equipment that would be replaced. Um, so the actual values of those vehicles are higher than, than what's stated 
um, as there's trade in value to be accounted for there. And the other thing that folks should know is um, these are looking at today's dollars and not necessarily being um, increased for inflationary value. Um, annually, uh, part of the efforts of this committee will be to make adjustments to those numbers uh, to reflect inflation on an annual basis and kind of make the adjustment as we, as we look out. So thank you for those points, Randy. The other point I wanted to bring up is that sometimes we have opportunity to buy used equipment. And that's happened with, I think, at least one of our fire engines in the past. So who knows? We, we shop around. We try to get the best deals to keep costs down in terms of replacing the capital inventory. Any other questions or comments from the group? Before we move on to our regularly scheduled monthly meeting of the Budget Committee? Not for me. For those that are watching, Mark, um, there's a link to the CIP that they can come in and, and review the work that's been done. And I believe that's up on the What's Next Middlesex mm -hmm. uh, webpage. Just want to make sure I'm accurate with yep. that statement. It is out there. And it's uh, up to date as much as we know. And it is a working uh, and evolving document. I'll, I'll say that so that as we are provided with updated information from any of the um, folks in town, whether it's the highway department or whatever, um, as they get updated pricing, uh, you know, we do uh, come in here and, and update this. So check back frequently. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, folks. That concludes our first capital budget preview. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice job. Well done. All right. We will now move on to our regularly scheduled budget committee meeting. So we'll call this meeting to order at 616. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay, we have the August meeting minutes to approve. Um, any any comments or changes to the August minutes? I know it seems like a long time ago, but all right. I think what I said for um, when I asked about establishing a new capital fund, I didn't mean just gravel. I meant dirt roads, our class two and three dirt roads in general. It says here. Uh, fund for gravel to maintain our dirt roads. So it should, I, what I really said was fund to maintain our dirt roads. And we've had emails since where you cleared something up, correct, Renda, about mm -hmm. spending? Since you, made, since, he, since you made that comment in August, we, we did so. follow yes, up with a couple of emails. <laughs> So class two and three dirt or just roads. Dirt, or just dirt roads. So and we, that it is in the document. So it, I don't know if you guys are looking on the digital version, but it's no. there as a suggestion. Okay. Yeah. So what did you add, uh, Elias? I deleted the words for gravel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's, that's good. Okay. Okay, great. So it's generally to maintain our dirt roads. Yes. Okay. All right, that being taken into account, do we have um, any other comments or um, is there a move to approve the minutes? So moved. Seconded. Right. So George moves. And Sarah seconds. Okay. All right. Action items. Let's get a vote on that. Let's see. Action item 36 was at a quarterly budget review. We've done that. Um, 
before you move on to farmer yes we've got a vote to approve those minutes oh i'm sorry yes let's vote to approve the minutes all in favor aye say aye aye aye, aye. it's lies okay i was not present so. right so approved um all right action item let's see 41 i check with dorinda on the conservation fund, and so we understand why that's annually now through a special article. Um, let's see, action item 42, I added the process verbiage that was suggested by Elias to the capital presentation that was done tonight. And capital fund for dirt roads is on the agenda. Okay, so, I guess we're on to the budget. Dorinda, why don't you give us a quick, <laughs> well, quick overview. Well, I've just given you the where we stand after three months. Um, the budget hearings will start the first Tuesday in November. Um, and we're starting with uh, all of our small committees. We've asked them all to submit something um, and if there's, if they want to come in and give a presentation, fine. Otherwise, you know, if it's a status quo from what they've done from previous years, they can just submit the budget and um, we'll put it into it. So this will include probably the planning commission, the recreation, uh, cemetery, uh, zoning, and I think, I think that's might be it. Okay. Um, and then after that, we haven't made a decision what will go next, whether we'll dive into the fire department or the highway department after that. But, okay. Um, and we'll probably, I'm assuming we'll do one at one meeting and one at another meeting. Mm -hmm. And then the town we usually save after we've gotten in everybody else's, we do the, the all the other items left on the budget. Okay. Um, in terms of the year-to-date budget that you gave us, you know the the big expense is the um, is under highway for the July flood. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know of seven hundred eighty-five thousand and change. Um, so we think we're going to get 75% of that back from FEMA. Is that the plan? Yes. Um, yeah, we will get it. We, we will get 75 from FEMA. And we will, hopefully, we will get something from the state as well. But the um, lease that we're looking at is 75%. Um, things are going very well with, um, with the, uh, with the progress we're making with FEMA. We meet with them every two weeks. Um, that number of 785,000 is very deceiving because the next one is where all the bills are gonna hit. Right now we're up to 1.8 million in billing for um, the highway alone. Uh, so, and uh, but it's not reflected here because it hasn't been expended. Um, so that's kind of like mm -hmm. <laughs> you think it hurts now. We did end up taking out a uh, three million dollar line of credit um, to cover these expenses, and I will have to tap into that um, next week. Um, I don't plan on, uh, it is a line of credit, so I don't intend to, you know, take it all at once. Um, we will have to, but we don't get, believe it or not, you don't get reimbursed for the interest you have to pay on that loan, so. Uh, um, any guesses how soon FEMA will start reimbursing? Well, we were just told, and it was it's a very small, so what they do is everything is divided into projects. And um, so they, like 
all the emergency work is considered a project. And then the next project will be all of this bid work we're putting out, and that'll be a project. So prior to this, they created the FEMA gentleman we're working with, he created a project just for dumpsters that we had to go out and put in place. He actually, it's all complete and done, so he submitted it. It's only like six or seven thousand dollars, but I'll take anything right now. Um, the other one that's complete is the fire department and the emergency work that was done there. He's in the process of reviewing that now and will be submitting that. So, um, has FEMA given you folks any um, reasonable or anything to expect in terms of turnaround time from when you submit to when? You know, we've heard reverse? all kinds of stories. Um, they're, they're really pushing us to get things in as soon as possible. We are on a deadline. All of our um, current, our emergency work and our expected bid project to finish up has to be in by the 21st, so next week. Wow. Okay. And we have to give them all estimated costs for that. And that's because what they do is they try to plan ahead and allocate the funds for it. Um, so we, uh, so once the funds are allocated and then we get it the product in, I don't think it will be as long as we initially expected. However, with the government and their shutdowns, right. you could be talking a whole different animal here. The FEMA people on the ground continue to work. They're, you know, non, um, they're essential employees. So they don't go away when the government shuts down, but the rest of it does go away. So um, we're hoping that we get it back sooner or later. Um, but yeah, it's you just won't believe the amount of work and time that's gone into it. We have to take every single road and take every single culvert, and we have to give a GPS number uh, location for every cul culvert that was installed, um, how much the culvert was and how much it was to install just the culvert. And then, you know, and then you have the rest of the billing that goes towards the road. And so I think, if I'm not mistaken, so far there's been something like 180 culverts put in. So Did you say 180? 80, oh, I think. Okay. I think it was something like that. <laughs> what if the work isn't done? So we don't have to have the work complete. Um, so all of the emergency work is complete. Now we have moved on to, as Randy was talking about before, the bids that we just, when you were asking before the meeting, um, that we have bids that have gone out to complete the remainder of the work on the roads. Um, and that we have a year to complete. So if we don't complete it all before the snow flies, we have next spring and summer to, you know, or next spring anyways to complete it. When you say a year, is it up until the disaster day, like July? He said a year, and I, you know, I didn't question whether it was to the From disaster now. date or I <laughs> believe that. Um, I can't say. I honestly don't I, want to put my I think foot. it's a year from the close of the close the of the information we're so submitting. I believe. So I hopefully we'll yeah. have till October. We're, we're both kind of on. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So um, but to be clear, that this $1.8 million that uh, we're talking about here is basically just the emergency. Just work. emergency. And, and there's been roughly. 200, somewhere between two and three hundred thousand dollars worth of additional work, bid work, that's been approved through those two bid processes that have gone out thus far. Okay. Um, and there's there's more to come. There's more. There's still. We kind of ran through the list real quickly the other day. There's still finished work to be done. I believe on about 20 roads. Okay. 
So it's, it's going to be a significant number when all is said and done. Yeah. If we have to pay just on the on the current that 1.8, the just the emergency work, that's a $450,000 match from the town. If the state doesn't step in and and reduce that 25% match that's required by the town, which hopefully the state is going to do, and there's been lots of talk about it, but it's definitely not approved at this point. And what they decide to buy that down, like, is it going to be 10%, mm -hmm. is it going to be 15 who knows. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the town's looking at a significant match um, yeah. from the storm alone. If clouds um, are put back better than they were, does FEMA cover all of that? Yes, they Good. recommend yeah. it. That is their Good. goal, is to fix things so we mitigate anything happening down the road. And that was the instruction through that emergency work, George, Good. that the select board provided to upsize everything where we could? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, we're going to, when all is said and done, we're going to have some nice roads that yeah. we weren't expecting. But by the same token, it's, it's not going to be free. Right. right. Knock on wood, they stay intact. Right. <laughs> we don't. We don't have another event. Disaster event. Yes. yes. So soon. So I see we have paid the FEMA project manager eighty-seven hundred and change. Yes. Um, we get reimbursed for that, or is that yes? All okay. administrative costs, and um, so that includes Sarah, myself, the project manager. Um, and the zoning administrator would all be covered on that. Great. The road crew has some quirkiness to how theirs is allocated um, because there's certain things that is considered, and this was part of the emergency work, that was considered their normal job. So they really, some of that will not be covered um, uh, reimbursed, but anything in overtime would be reimbursed. Um, and but there are some loopholes if anything was being done. You know, they, there's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts in there. And um, the other thing, though, is all of our equipment is covered. So if they're using, even if the manpower isn't being reimbursed for using the dump truck, the dump truck is. So wouldn't that mean then rental of an excavator because we don't have a working one? Wouldn't that be covered? Yes. When it's being used for FEMA-related or yeah. flood-related efforts, yes. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. It would not be covered if they're just out doing, you know, general Normal. ditching mm -hmm. in, you know, areas that were not impacted yep. by the flood. Their usual scheduled maintenance. Yes, yeah. right. Cover. Can't yep. imagine there there's any areas it, not impacted right. by the flood, um, but. Dorinda, is there going to be any challenge in separating people's regular hours from doing their jobs versus, you know, FEMA-related stuff? Is that going to be so challenging? Since, the, since day one, um, Eric, the road foreman, has been keeping a log of all the work that the road crew had done and um, what was FEMA work, what was not FEMA work. Great. What, what what pieces of equipment were being used. So um, we haven't got to that step yet, but um, that will be all captured. He's got good records. Great. Great. Okay, anything else on the budget or the July flooding repairs costs, <laughs> which we have covered in significant detail, <laughs> which is good. Um, all right, um, discussion about established new capital fund. Might be two of them here, because there might be the one for dirt roads that we had talked about. And there's the other one that we talked about, I'll call it an emergency fund, based on the July flooding. Though I have to admit, though, on the emergency fund, I've had second thoughts mainly because of the way that um, Dorinda and folks have handled it, you know, budget-wise. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure that we could even begin to make a puddle in a lake, right. you know, yeah. based on what needs to be done and moving funds around and getting lines of credit. I'm just not so sure anymore that establishing an emergency fund for that purpose is really going to get us anywhere. Thoughts, comments? I, I, I think that's a good thought. I think that's a little bit of wisdom. What, now that we see the numbers, um, I mean, when before all of this, it seemed like a good idea to have a little slush fund on the side. But since things like this happen and then FEMA comes in and we get this percentage or that percentage and everything really has to be as granular as it is. Um, Other comments, thoughts, Elias, anything on thoughts on your end? I mean, I think you're right. It got a splat, a dent in it. Uh, part of me thinks it might still be around, but it really is almost meaningless. Yeah, I was, you know, trying to run the numbers as Randy was in terms of what we might be left with, you know, holding the bag from this thing. And I figured, you know, if the cost ended up being, let's say, two million just for kicks, and the state covered three quarters of that, I'm sorry, FEMA covered three quarters of that, right? So that's um, what is that, a million and a half, right? And then the state came in and covered maybe two hundred thousand of that. We'd let be left with three hundred thousand. And we probably could cover it though, because we've got, I'll call it the, I'll call it the, um, oh, my aging brain. The general fund surplus probably would cover that, if I'm not mistaken, or close to it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> your thoughts, Drew. You can't move As that always. money. No, no, you can't. You, it just drains all your operational money. It cash. drains right. your operational money. The other thing is, Every conversation we have, and it doesn't matter what the conversation it is, everybody wants to spend this money. money. Yep. Um, whether it's the the money, the fund balance, or whether it's the opera funds. Right. Or oh, I forgot about that. Everybody opera funds. has, yeah. uh, you know, a reason for spending it. And the one good thing about this is the rate we got for the line of credit I felt was very, very good compared to what's out there. And there's also, when all is said and done, there's going to be long-term financing at a good rate. Um, SBA is doing some kind of stuff. The bond bank is doing something. Um, they haven't come out with their rates yet. And, and I still have 100% faith in the bank that we deal with that they will be as competitive as everybody else. And um, so I think, you know, I don't think we're going to be looking at a 7% rate. Um, mm -hmm. I hope not anyways, unless right. things change dramatically. But Well, to be, to be honest, I mean, we're already facing those rates when they gave us the rate for the three million dollar note and we're nowhere near that and we're nowhere near yeah yeah so you know, it's less than half of that which is great yeah or no about I, half of that. about half it, i paid with it 3.99 yeah. yeah right right i, I Remember, mean yeah you couldn't have asked for anything more right. and um so and they also said depending on um that is a one-year note but they said that depending on the, at the end of the year, they would look at it and see if it could be extended or not. Mm -hmm. So I think they're looking to see, you know, they're not, you know, concrete in anything. They're not saying that's guaranteed, but they're, right. they're got their eyes wide open as to what they can do too. Yep. So I'm sure everybody's going to be flexible here yeah. with, with what's going on. Can I ask what bank we use? Pardon? Can I ask what bank we use? Yes, it was our the bank we do everything with, Community Bank. And, cool. and interestingly enough, Community Bank, if anybody read, they, is the flooding in Montpelier, they had these, um, I can't remember what they're called, the flood doors. Flood gates. Flood gates that they put on the, and the bank did not get flooded, but it did get flooded from something else, can't remember, but the flood gates worked, they're like 300 pounds a piece. They had a couple guys install them. You know, they've got, they've got rubber edges so that they compress. And 
I mean, unbelievable that they would thought of this. But yet, while all the businesses along State Street were getting flooded, the bank was hanging in there, and they opened within days. Huh. Yeah. Sounds like everybody needs floodgates. Yeah, I know. So, so the question, I guess, before this committee is whether, you know, a few meetings ago, July or August, we said, hey, we should have an emergency fund or name it something and start funding it. June. Oh, was it June? <laughs> Jason. Yeah. So, so what, what are your thoughts now? I mean, I guess we'll go with majority rules here and whether we should institute a new fund for emergencies. I think at this point we should table it for a sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would agree. I, as much as I love to plan and, and it'd be wonderful to have money sitting in an account that was ready for us to utilize in a situation like this, um, I can't help but think about all of the other needs that we have and just the continual ask of the town residents to continually to fund more and more and more and um, while it would be lovely to have right I just I think there are bigger, world. bigger priorities yep. and uh, the other comment and then I'll ask George and Elias to weigh in is that I think the the comment was something that Dorinda made either last meeting or the meeting before and it's one thing to fund for things we know are going to happen it's a whole other situation for, to fund for things that we don't know if or when they're going to happen. And I think from a taxpayer's perspective, it's just a tougher sell. Yeah. Yeah. George, any comments, thoughts? No, I was thinking even before I came here, we don't know enough about how we're going to come out at the end of this financially. So I think a, an emergency fund would be premature, and I agree with what everyone else said. I'm on the same page as well. I think it makes sense to, to pass on that for now. Okay. All right, we will table that. Um, the other thing is, uh, and this is what George brought up a few meetings ago, was whether we would, we should set up a capital fund for dirt roads or not. Now, Randy and I had the conversation, either in email or in a meeting, I can't remember, with the highway crew last year, I think, or the year before, I can't remember when it was, about, well, we talked about road gravel, but it was more about you know, maintenance of the roads, and they wanted to keep it in their budget. And any idea where they stand on that now? I think we, we sit in the same spot that, and I actually think at one point, Christian Meyer from CVLT weighed in on that as oh, well. Oh, he did? Okay. I believe so. I'd have, to dig, yeah? I'd have to dig through some emails uh, to find that out for sure, but uh, uh, Christian is the one who uh, took the lead on developing uh, CIP um, okay. uh, through this whole effort, and I thought, and I may be wrong, but I thought he weighed in at one point and said that um, uh, essentially and at this point, I think the conversation was a little bit different, where we were trying to basically um, uh, fund a stockpile of, of material, if you would. And, and I think it, the feedback was that that wasn't uh, a, a great idea for what the CIP was designed for, that it did fall more in the realm of take your five-year road plan, continue to include that cost in the budget for the annual the annual yeah. budget um that's my memory as well that there was something that was either christian passed on to us or the state frowned upon having gravel on a cip yeah. yeah and general road maintenance too well we got a lot of capital i wonder if it's worth asking christian again yeah i mean if if, if this is something that um you know, we want to, it's, it feels like it's probably something that's going to continually come up. I mean, mm -hmm. another thought that I've had as I was thinking about this, um, uh, you know, after I read through the minutes and, and whatnot, is um, one of the silver linings um, for, 
from the impact of the storm is that our roads are going to be in much better condition. And we're catching on up on uh, a lot of deferred maintenance to the roads um, being forced to right. address it, right? So I started thinking about, okay, well, we can't take this for granted and say, okay, the roads are good and, and have de a bunch of deferred maintenance on it moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it really just highlights the need to continue to focus on it and, and stay, keep these roads maintained at the same time as bringing some of the other roads up. So, you know, it's something that, that I talk to myself from both ends of that conversation. <laughs> Well, I was thinking coming up McCulloch Hill Road the other, the other day. Well, we did get a lot of capital improvements out of this flood. Yes. Well, and I think that's how we get ahead, right? Is by being smart and including it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Continually. Continually so that we're ahead of the game right. in that way versus having a little extra So fun. I think my personal take, I'll just... Uh, follow yep. finish up full circle I think my personal take is to uh, continue to include it in the annual budget for the highway department and understand that this committee is going to have to remind the select board every time they go to that fund or that line item as we're looking at budgets to say oh well, the roads are good we can reduce money here right and we just have to remind folks that we don't want to fall back into, you know, a situation where we've got a ton of uh, deferred maintenance on roads and and not enough gravel on the roads, as Eric would say, or, right. Eric, or you know, to still slate out there. Yeah. So, yeah, when I was on this committee before in '21, remember we put in that extra forty thousand yeah. because we were behind. Some people complained loudly about that. Wow. A town meeting. Yeah, what a difference. Was that 21? It must have been 20. Yeah. The 21. It's been fiscal. there probably five years, anyways, so that line item. Yeah. And sure. yeah. The 20 town meeting. The last one we had before COVID. Good for you all. Maybe the, you know, the, so you're looking at tell us, but I'm curious how much variance there is in like gravel costs from one year to the next. Because to me, if, if full expenses are varying widely, or what you know, a lot but from one year to the next, it makes it very hard to budget for it in any one year. And that's when I would think it might make sense to think of it more as a capital expense that you even out over the years. I don't I don't think the cost of the materials vary that greatly from year to year, Elias. I think what what, what gets about the amount of, I'm sorry, you broke up there. What about the amount that we're getting? Like do we get wildly different gravel from one year to the next? Or other materials like that? I think they've just recently continued to include that in the annual budget. There you know, prior to you know the the effort that George was talking about about that uh, specialized services line item. I think is what it was called at that point, and that was to originally to hire some contractors to do some of the road maintenance work that was falling behind. Um, but it, it, for like the gravel itself and whatnot, it's not necessarily the material cost. It's all of the trucking fees mm -hmm. and the fuel. Um, that's that's the majority of the cost that the town incurs when we start talking about getting gravel on the roads. I remember Eric and Vic mentioning that if you break it down, the, the actual materials is not that much. It's really getting moving it, it around. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. I guess what well, is just that if we are, if it's hard to predict how much we're going to need to spend on roads one year to the next, that's when I start thinking of it as something that we should be for over multiple years. I think consistency is the key. Yeah, maybe it's more our behavior that could make it consistent. Yeah. I, I don't know. So so I guess it sounds like if we're all comfortable with Randy's suggestion that we keep it in the highway budget, I think we just we monitor it and we see is this thing gonna start to have gyrations or is it gonna stay pretty consistent? If it is, if it stays consistent, it probably makes more sense to leave it in the annual budget 
if we start to see peaks and valleys, we can bring it up again about creating a capital fund for that work. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Could also, you know, as we have conversations on an annual basis with the highway department as they're putting their budgets together, um, have that conversation. See what they plan on doing, you know, prior to, you know, right. them, you know, actually issuing their budget to the select board and just have that conversation mm -hmm. to say, hey, remember, just what's the outlook for, you know, road maintenance for the gravel and whatever. Yep. Um, the ditching, so, the yep. culverts, the whole yep. nine yards, yeah. Um, I, so I think that gets to the end of the agenda unless we have other matters. I, I have one, I just was interested, has there been any more movement on any uh, specifics what we're gonna do with the remaining ARPA money? I, <laughs> the remaining what money? ARPA. Uh, okay. So there's roughly $315,000 remaining that hasn't been allocated. I think we got $515,000 and these are approximate numbers because I, I could be off, but uh, I think we allocated 70000 to the fire department for air packs, $100,000 for um, uh, fiber. CV fiber, right? And what else? I'm missing out on the, yeah, the other $30,000 one. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there's approximately $315,000 yeah, left too. Yep. Uh, out of that fund. Um, people have their eye on it all over the place. Uh, um, I think, you know, uh, I don't know what the select board's ideas are moving forward. We haven't really had a discussion about mm -hmm. that. We understand that it hasn't been allocated yet and it has to be done by the end of next calendar year right end of 2024 we have to make the decision then spend yeah. it all by end of 2026 yes yeah um so i mean i can only speak you know uh as to you know what i assume but i don't think anybody's eager to uh allocate the rest of that money until we come out of this flood recovery <clears throat> okay yeah um are we earning any interest on it is it in a i'm assuming it's, it's read so we've actually asked and it doesn't matter if it sits in our checking account or in a savings account we earn the same interest on it so yeah so that's where it sits and the reason we didn't invest it in any kind of certificate was we didn't know when we were going to spend it. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's why it sits there. And actually, that, that money along with our fund and along with tax payments coming in, that's what's kept us from having to right. yeah. draw on the line of credit. The school tax, right? Oh, yeah. That one's coming next week. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Be prepared. <laughs> what, yeah. 915,000? 911? 914. 914. Oh. A quarter. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, any other items that folks want to bring up before we close? Um, I think just recognizing that the select board is putting out notice for, you know, we're coming into budget time. Yes. Um, so, and I think, you know, the last item on here is scheduling next meetings, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I think last year, you know, we made a pretty significant effort to attend, you know, all yes. of those meetings yes. um, and be actively involved. And, and I hope we continue to do the same this year. Um, yeah, last year was challenging. I think we started at, what, 21% budget increase? Yeah. Uh, it was, we're we're it up was there. Big. Yeah. We're up big. there. We had a lot of... There's a lot of hacking and chopping yeah. to be done. So, you know, I would love to see this committee, mm -hmm. you know, uh, remain active uh, through that whole process. And, um, you know, uh, so I just wanted to call call that out and hopefully we're... Yep. I got the email from Sarah. I think I forwarded to you the first yep. select board meeting on the 7th of November. So as um, Dorinda said, probably got one, two, three, four departments there on... 
Seven. Yeah, anything that we get that the small committees, I can just forward that on. Great. I don't think it'll be huge mm -hmm. at the next meeting, but after that, I think there'll be significant discussions. Yeah, because highway still takes up about half of our operating budget. Yeah, I think it's like 58%. Yeah, it's probably higher now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. growing. Yeah. It's growing. All right, so next meeting. So we usually would do it the third Tuesday of the month, which would be the 21st. Is that the same night as select board? Uh, yes. Uh, so that would be... So we go back to back, right? Yeah, the 24th. Oh, is it the 24th? Tuesday the 24th. No, you're not looking at November. Yeah. I was just counting 14 days from the second. Oh, uh, so I was sorry. Yes, I was looking at October. Um, but if the 7th, if they're going to start budget conversations, then um, it would make sense to attend that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. On the 7th. And yes. Then, and then it might mean that we're into a two meeting a month schedule again. Yes. Uh, depending on what's on the board's agenda. Yep. And even if, quite frankly, even if there's, if there is uh, a lapse in a budget meeting for the select board, it may give us a time to um, look at what the next group is and uh, maybe see if there's anything that we should discuss prior to it making it to the board. Mm -hmm. So would we just schedule for the seventh? Would that make the most Yeah, sense? we can do that. Prepare ourselves. So we're doing, what, four and the select board? Is that right? Yeah. Four o'clock and then select board is five, right? Okay. Unless there's anything else, we are adjourned. Do we have an election on that?